next surah, Surah Ar-Rahman, and what will make us understand what is Surah Ar-Rahman. And I, I don't need to tell you, of course, Surah Ar-Rahman is one of my favorite surahs, and it's all of our favorite surahs. Surah Ar-Rahman is a very, very early Meccan surah. Maybe even the second year of the da'wah, we're going back to the very beginning of Islam. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would recite this surah in Salat al-Tahajjud regularly. Also, he recited this surah on the night of the jinn, to the jinn. And the night of the jinn is a very interesting episode that I don't have time to get into, but briefly, one night in Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ went missing for an entire night. And Ibn Mas'ud and the Sahaba panicked, and then he came from the desert the next morning. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, where were you? We spent the worst night of our lives trying to find you. Where did you go? He said, when I went to sleep. Uh, a messenger from the jinn came to me and told me that there's a delegation that wants to talk to me. So I went outside and I spent the whole night with them, speaking with them, teaching them. Uh, and so there are some jinn from the Sahaba and the jinn have been taught their uh, special uh, rulings and ahkam of the Sharia that they know. Uh, sometimes a joke when I'm teaching my class, I say that the jinns are not told to do wudu. They don't, they're, not, they're not going to extinguish themselves when they pray. So they have their separate ahkam of tahara and their separate rulings of fiqh that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught them. And of the things that he did that night, we learned this in a hadith in Tirmidhi, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recited to them Surat, a lot of people say Surat Al-Jinn, no, he didn't recite Surat Al-Jinn, he recited Surat Al-Rahman to the Jinn on the night of the Jinn. And uh, whenever he said, The jinn would respond, That That we will reject none of the blessings of our Lord. And so the jinn heard Surah Ar-Rahman from the voice of the Prophet Sallallahu and they embraced Islam. Uh, and uh, this is a beautiful uh, anecdote about Surah, uh, Surah Ar-Rahman. Also, Surah Ar-Rahman, one of the reasons why we know that the surah was revealed so early is because Ibn Mas'ud uh, he volunteered to read the Qur'an in front of the Kaaba for the first time, this is way before Surah Al-Najm, maybe by three years, that some of the Sahaba got together and they said, you know, none of the Quraysh has heard the Qur'an being recited out loud. What if we were to recite the Qur'an out loud? And so they volunteered who would go, Ibn Mas'ud insisted, I want to be the one that will be the first to recite the Qur'an in the whole valley of Mecca, just to recite loudly tilawatan. Nobody had done that in early Islam because they were being persecuted. So they could couldn't do that. So Ibn Mas'ud said, I want to do that. And so Ibn Mas'ud stood in front of the Kaaba and he began to recite which surah? Surah Ar-Rahman. And the people initially surrounded him mesmerized until some of the thugs came and began beating him until he was blue in the face, until he went unconscious because of the beating. And even as they were beating him, he continued to recite Surah Ar-Rahman. So Surah Ar-Rahman has the distinct honor of being the first surah of the Quran that was recited with tilawa in front of the Kaaba. And the whole people of Mecca heard uh, this is Ibn Mas'ud, the Prophet was, uh, as a Surah Al-Najm incident took place a few years after this. So Surah Al-Rahman was revealed very early on. And some of the Sahaba, they used to call Surah Al-Rahman, Arus Al-Quran, the bride of the Quran. Meaning, by bride here, what do they mean? They mean the most decorated of the Quran. And Surah Al-Rahman is uh, a surah that deals with the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman. It is as if the entire surah explains who is Ar-Rahman. That is what the surah is. The whole surah is a tafsir of the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman, and mentions one blessing after another. And that's why the phrase is repeated once the blessing is mentioned. So which of these blessings are you going to negate and die? You're taking advantage of all of them. And this surah has many unique things about it. Of the unique things about this surah is that this surah clearly displays a duality. That for Firstly, the speech is in the duality. And if you know your Arabic, you know that Arabic has the single and the dual and the plural. As for English, it has single and plural. There is no dual, but Arabic has dual. And the dual is very rarely invoked. How often do you only speak to exactly two people? And even modern Arabs, when they speak to two people, they just jump to the plural. They say all of you rather than just the duality. And the Quran or Surah Al-Rahman uses the dual, but not just in this also. 
throughout it that خلق الإنسان وخلق الجان رب المشقين ورب المغربين. So it's very clear there's a duality in Surah Ar-Rahman. Also, another thing unique about Surah Ar-Rahman is that it is the only surah in the Quran that begins with the name of Allah and that name of Allah is the ayah, Ar-Rahman, that's it. So that is it, there's nothing, there's, that is the first verse. And there is no other verse in the Quran that consists of the name of Allah in and of itself. And that is an honor to this surah, Surah Ar-Rahman. And of course, everyone knows, every single Muslim in the world knows that the one thing that makes Surah Ar-Rahman unique is the phrase, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ which, occur, which occurs exactly 31 times in the uh, surah. And the translation of course is, which of the blessings, which of the favors of your Lord are you going to deny? And we're gonna explain what this means to um, deny. Now, the, the, the surah of course is very, very beautiful as you all know, everyone knows Surah Ar-Rahman. And of course, look at the order, order Ar-Rahman. Al-Quran khalaq al-insana allamahu al-bayan. He taught us the Quran, he created man, and then he taught us how to speak eloquently. Notice this beautiful order here. The Quran comes before our existence. The Quran is more important than our existence. If Allah created us without the Quran, our existence would be meaningless. He would not create us without guidance. Our existence comes after the guidance. Therefore, عَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانِ And then, عَلَّمَهُ الْبَيَانِ Allah taught, uh, Allah taught man, Adam, and through Adam, all of us, bayan. And bayan is not just speech, it is eloquent speech. No other species, no other creation has bayan except for mankind. The animals have speech. They can communicate. They can tell danger here or food there, but they don't have bayan. Bayan is poetry. Bayan is philosophy. Bayan is deep thoughts. Bayan is metacognition. Bayan is to know and to think about why you're here. How do you get your knowledge from? Where do you have that? So bayan is a whole different level. And by the way, bayan implies aql because you cannot have eloquent speech and deep speech without, without intellect. If Allah said, I gave him intellect, that would not have included bayan. But if Allah says, I gave him bayan, bayan includes intellect. And so it's a double. You get one and you have another thing in Incorporated. So by telling us that Allah taught us bayan, we are the only species that has eloquent uh, speech. We are the only species that records our histories. We're the only species that thinks of abstract concepts. We're the only species that can contextualize. As I said, the whole notion of metacognition, the awareness of our awareness, that is something that no other species has. The species are aware, but they're aware at one dimensional level or call it at a very linear level. As for us, Allah has given us a level of intellect that no other species has. And bayan is the ability to express that intellect automatically. And so look at the, bless the blessings of Allah, how can you deny these blessings? And therefore, after this comes the issue of which of the favors of your Lord, your Lord here to duality, meaning both men and jinn, both men and jinn, the, re the, the grace of men and the race, race of jinn. Which of the blessings of your Lord would both of you deny? How can you uh, deny this? And the reality of denial, what does it mean to, to deny, to uh, kathiban? What does it mean? There's an, a le levels of uh, a denial. There's levels of denial. And of course, the greatest or the worst type of denial is to uh, deny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them in the first place. And this is what atheists do, or this is what people who don't believe in God do. There's another level of denial, and that is what the Quraysh of Mecca did, where they affirm that Allah gave it, but then they thank and they worship other than Allah. And that is a level of denial. And then there is a third level of denial. And that third level, we have to be cognizant of that as Muslims. And that is to affirm that Allah gave it, but to not thank Allah. This is a type of takdeeb. It's not as, it's not to the level of the first two, but still it is a type of takdeeb to appreciate and to acknowledge, but then to fail to give thanks to Allah. This is a level of takdeeb that is no doubt much less than the previous two, but it is still there. And then Allah Azza wa Jal mentions eight blessings of this uh, world, eight uh, blessings that he has uh, given us. And a powerful surah that he created man, he is the Lord of all directions, he brought the seas together, he blessed us with ships, uh, he taught us uh, the beautiful descriptions of uh, all that is on here. And then, كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ all that is here, Allah builds up. 
how beautiful this world is. And then he says, it shall all go away. كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانٍ Everyone will simply vanish. Fan is not just to, it's not just to die, to disappear. Nothing will be left of, uh, of us. And this is so true. Where are the people of a thousand years ago? Where are, and, and eventually even their bones will be gone uh, when the trumpet is blown. وَيَبَقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ And only Allah and the attributes of Allah will remain. And that is why we need to remember, we need Allah. يَسْأَلُهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ All that is in the heavens and earth, they ask him every instance he is engaged in a matter of importance. After this follow seven threats of uh, punishment and judgment. And Allah Azza wa mentions that that was the hell that you used to deny and go between that and the burning fire and the burning water. And then follow eight verses, eight descriptions of a higher level of paradise and then eight of the lower level of paradise. So we have a grand total of eight blessings, followed by seven punishments, followed by eight of the higher level of Jannah, followed by eight of the lower level of Jannah. You do the math, eight plus eight plus seven plus eight, and you get exactly 31. And this is what the فَبِأَيَّ عَلَىٰ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ is coming after. Uh, so Allah Azza wa Jal mentions uh, the people of Jahannam, and then He mentions the people of Jannah. And take this as a general rule that whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Jahannam, He always mentions Jannah. It is an almost uh, general rule of the entire Qur'an. Of course, there are some exceptions, but generally speaking, whenever Allah mentions punishment, He also mentions His mercy. Whenever Allah mentions Jahannam, He will also mention uh, Jannah, descriptions we're talking about. Whenever there are descriptions, you will get both. Also take a general rule that the descriptions of Jannah are much more detailed than the descriptions of Jahannam. This is a general rule in the Qur'an. The descriptions of the punishments are lesser and the descriptions of the rewards are much more. And something that is very interesting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divides in multiple verses in the Qur'an the people of Jannah in two categories. And He doesn't typically divide the people of Jahannam. Generally speaking, the people of Jahannam are the, the people of Jahannam. Adab and, and, and we have it. Even though who will be more, the people of Jannah or the people of Jahannam? The hadith tell us the people of Jahannam will be more because most of mankind do not believe. Most of mankind have rejected. Yet the categories are more for the people of Jannah. And we see this in Surah Al-Waqi'ah that Allah Azza wa Jal divides mankind into three categories, right? Ashabul Yameen, Ashabul Shimal and as sabiqun The right hand, which is good people. The left hand, the bad people. as sabiqun the elite. So two-thirds of the categories are Jannah, even though they are the minority of people. You understand what I'm saying here, right? And in other verses in the Qur'an as well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions two categories of Jannah and one of Jahannam. For example, uh, The first category. Some people are zalim to themselves. Some are average, so-so. وَمِنْهُمْ سَابِقٌ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ And some are racing forward. So once again, two-thirds of the categories, مُخْتَصِدْ Okay, he's just done his job. His bare minimum, he gets there. And then سَابِق The one who's winning the race. Even though the majority of people will be in Jahannam, Allah gives two categories of the people of Jannah. Why? Because when it comes to the punishments, the fact of the matter is that it's not more of an incentive if the punishments are worse. It's an incentive that it's a punishment, right? When somebody says, if you do this, you're going to go to jail. He doesn't describe which level jail. First security, second security. What is it? Not first security. What is it? First level. What is it? Huh? I wouldn't know these things. <laughs> that was a low blow. It's all right. <laughs> maximum, middle security, whatever it is, right? Nobody says, if you do this, you're going to go maximum security. They just say, if you do it, you're going to go jail, right? It's enough to say jail. It's enough, it's a punishment enough, right? So when it comes to the tafseel of Jahannam, Allah Azza wa is generic, He just says the punishments. But when it comes to getting the prize, when it comes to winning, you want to know what's the first prize. Even though one person is going to get it, right? If the company has a, any type of, of event or something, if a race, there's 10,000 people running the race, one is going to get the first prize. But you want to know what that one prize is, right? It's human nature, it gives an incentive. So even though the majority of people are going to Jahannam, the descriptions of Jahannam are more generic 
Of course, when I say more generic, of course Allah describes it. But look at Surah Rahman. Four verses of Jahannam and then over 14 of Jannah. Right? Literally one paragraph of Jahannam. Right? يُعْرَفُ الْمُجِّمِرِ بِسِيمَهُ فَيُخْلُ بِالنَّوَاسِ وَالْأَقْدَامِ هَذِهِ جَهَنَّمُ الَّتِي هَذِهِ جَهَنَّمُ الَّتِي هَذِهِ جَهَنَّمُ الَّتِي هَذِهِ جَهَنَّمُ الَّتِي يُكَذِّبُ يَبْهَ الْمُجْرِمُونَ يَطُوفُونَ بَيْنَهَ وَبَيْنَ حَمِيمٍ آن Quite literally there's two verses that describe Jahannam. Then, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ And it goes on and on about the Jannahs. Now, an interesting point here about the, the, the final two categories, and that's why I have the Qur'an in my hand, so that I don't make a, a mistake here. So, the final two categories, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ The one who truly fears the position of his Lord will get two Jannahs. This is the higher category. Then, Few ayat down, seven ayat down. وَمِن دُونِهِمَا جَنَّتَانِ Lesser than those two high categories are two lower categories. وَمِن دُونِهِمَا Lesser than the higher category, there's a lower category. And if you look at every single description, it goes in parallel, right? It goes in parallel. And uh, the levels of Jannah are parallel together. There's clearly two levels of Jannah here. There's the higher level, verses 46 to 61, and then the lower level, verses 62 to 78. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there are two Jannahs for the high category. Then He says there are two Jannahs for the lowest category. The first question, what do these Jannahs look like? The higher level is promised to وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ The one who had the fear of Allah will get Jannatan. Doesn't mean two gardens. It's a mistake really to translate it so literally. Jannatan, it indicates plurality because the Arabs would sometimes indicate plurality by, via duality. And so those who have the khashya of Allah will have two gardens. And then later on in verse 62 or 63, وَمِن دُونِهِمَا جَنَّتَان And lesser than those two are yet other series of gardens. So you have the higher level and then you have the lower level. And who is the highest level given to? هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ Verse 61 here. هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ What will be the reward of those who practice perfection other than to be given perfection? One of the scholars of the past said, how infinitely merciful is Allah. Our attempt at perfection, which must be imperfect, Allah Azza wa Jal called Ihsan. And Allah said, if we try to be perfect, He will give us Ihsan, His perfection. What a generous Lord, that when we try with our imperfect manner, He will call it Ihsan, and He will accept it as excellence, even though we can never be excellent. And then, even if we tried and we're going to fail to be excellent, Allah will return to us that which is Ihsan, which is the highest level. And what do you think Allah's excellence is going to be? And so, these two, um, gen these two levels of Jannah, as we said, they are? Uh, they are layered together. If you go to it verse by verse, and so for the highest level, that uh, uh, the, uh, the higher level, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, there is uh, uh, the af afnan, plenty of branches uh, in the higher one. In the lower one, mudhamata, dhawata afnan. Dhawata afnan is the higher level, that the branches are plenty. And the lower level, mudhamatan, they are luscious green. So the first question, what is the description of the Jannah? So the higher category has lots of branches. And Allah describes the branches because the branches have the fruits. The lower category, it's luscious green, the foliage is green. The second question that comes to mind is, where do they get the water from? Where does the water come from these Jannah? This is the first question that will come to the mind of, once you say it's a beautiful Jannah, okay, where's the water come? So. Allah Azza wa Jalla describes the water. That fihi ma ainani tajriyan, the higher category. There's two rivers flowing. The lower category fihi ma ainani nadhaqatan, two two springs that are bubbling. So which one is better, flowing or bubbling? Flowing. Bubbling is just coming out of the ground. Nadhaqatan. The higher level flowing. Tajriyan. Tajriyan, the two rivers are flowing in the middle. Nadakhatan, they're bubbling. No doubt the ones that are flowing are more than the ones that are uh, bu bu bubbling. The next question in everybody's mind, okay, what's in the garden? What are the fruits in the garden? So the higher category, Fihima min kulli fakihatin zawjan. There's no list. Every fruit you can imagine, it's in multiple. Zawjan means there's not just one apple. Here we have Macintosh apple and green apple and this apple and that apple. So every fruit has multiple varieties. Min kulli in zawjan. In the lower category, there's a list. Anytime you have a list, it's not going to be as variety, right? Right. And the lower list is what? Fihima, 
fakihatun wa nakhlun wa rumman it's a list okay there is fakiha there's t- types of fruits there's nakhl there's pomegranates uh, uh, dates and pomegranates okay so this is the lower category then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions now here's the only place where there is a, a slight switch of order the only order that's switched is this the higher category is mentioned their sofas and the lower category is mentioned their companions and then after the sofas of the higher category you get the companions of the higher category after the sofas of the lower category you get the companions of the lower category that's the only switch memorize that why this is the case is beyond the scope we don't have time but just memorize this so the higher category muttaqiina ala furushin bata'inuha min istabraq they are sitting on couches furush's couch bata'inuha the inside lining of the couches is from the highest quality of silk now when you purchase a sofa you don't ask what is inside the lining of the sofa you ask what is the outer lining so by describing the inner lining the outer lining cannot be described that's what allah is saying istabraq is a persian word means the highest category of silk for the arabs istabraq was the best silk they imported it from persia so allah says they will be sitting on but uh, on furush on couches the inner linings are from made out of that category of silk wa janal jannataini dan and the two uh, jannas will be close to them the couches the batin or the inside of it is the greatest luxurious silk istabraq which is the highest level of silk brocades that man could even imagine allah is saying the inner lining who describes couches with the inner lining allah is saying i can't even describe the outer lining in your language i can only tell you the inner lining is something that the max you can imagine that it is what, what is going to be this is in the higher level and as for the lower category their couches are mentioned after that muttaqin ala rafrafin khudrin they will be sitting on green cushions wa abqariyan hisan and uh, Abqari and Hisan is a description of the cushions and I always asked our Arab brothers what does Abqari mean and they all say smart so the cushions are iPad friendly they have smart cushions you can do this and that right no Abqari actually means it doesn't actually mean smart uh, of course it means smart in our times but in classical Arabic Abqar was the capital of the imaginary land of the jinns I repeat Abqar was the capital there was an imaginary land right uh, of the jinn so abqar was the capital of this imaginary land so if something was out of this world they would say abqari it's out of this world we can't imagine what this is and later on then abqari meant genius right that this guy's a super genius so modern arabs use abqari to mean this guy's a genius but classical arabic abqari meant out of this world so abqari and hisan you cannot even describe uh, the couches and they are beautiful couches a uh, bit controversial but nonetheless it's in the quran so what can we do uh, our sisters is gonna not like this but allah musta'an uh, the brothers are eagerly waiting so we'll finish with this uh, so as for the 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 hur allah azza wa jal mentions by the way the word hur is not used in the higher category it's only used in the lower category and this is very powerful the higher category is qasirat the lower category is maqsuratun fil khiyam right and this is beautiful and this is really powerful i know all the brothers are paying complete attention pin drop silence here if only they could pay attention for other durus like this one qasirat means they are causing your eyes to go down. In the, uh, the gardens, Jannatan, are those entities that cause your eyes to go down just on them. Now, what does this mean? It means these creatures are so beautiful that your eyes will never wander to any other being. Imagine that type of beauty. Your eyes are hooked and connected. They're never going to wander anywhere else. And as for the other one, that uh, there are hur that are sequestered. They are put aside in tents, right? So the second category, the hur are put aside. The first category, these creatures put your eyes aside, i.e., they lower your gaze. One final point, I'm going very brief to see it. One final point. Subhanallah, every single description, fihima, fihima, fihima. Then when it comes to the hur, fihinna, khayratun hisan. Fihinna, qasiratu tarf. 
You understand what I'm saying here? Right? In Surah Rahman, every single time, Fihima, in the two of them, in the two of them. When it comes only to the Hur, it says, Fihin. And this is a nukta latifa. It's a very interesting switch of the language that most people just gloss over. That when it comes to the Hur, instead of saying, Fihima, Allah says, Fihinna. Why? Because, Fihima means amongst them. But Fihinna means hidden inside of the gardens. Because, you want people to see your furniture. You don't want people to see your hurs. You want people to see your gardens. You want people to see the lush. But the hur is something private. So, fihinna, embedded inside, away from the eyes of others. It's not fihima, it's fihinna, deep inside them where nobody else can see. And there's that nukta, latifa, just a small bit of inside. In any case, just realize one simple thing, dear brothers and sisters. Our Prophet وسلم, said, Laysa fil jannati a'zub. No one shall be single in Jannah. To have full happiness, we need to have a partner. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give partners to all of us in Jannah. Those who, whose partners uh, make it, inshallah, we ask Allah, all of us are like that, they will have their partners in Jannah. And definitely there is one of these gender differences as well, that men have something that women do not. But the point is women will also have in their own uh, Jannah, they will have things that are pleasing to them. In case a woman is single, then our Prophet explicitly said, there is no single person in Jannah. And so our scholars mentioned they shall have companions, either companions that Allah has created for them for Jannah or a companion of this world whom Allah Azza wa will marry to them. In any case, this is something that it is understood from the context that no one is going to be single in uh, Jannah. And uh, the surah concludes with the ultimate praise, تَبَارَكَ اسْمُ رَبِّكَ ذِي الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Blessed is the name of your Lord. If the name of Allah is blessed, then how about Allah Himself? تَبَارَكَ اسْمُ رَبِّكَ The Lord full of majesty, the Lord full of honor. The point that I wanted to mainly stress is the levels of Jannah, that the higher level, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ The lower level, وَمِنْ دُونِهِمَا جَنَّتَانِ And of course, that's why only in the higher level, Allah finishes, هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ Right? That is the higher level, and that is the level of Ihsan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of that level of Ihsan.